So I got on my my special t-shirt today for a special guest, my Cornell wrestling t-shirt for Cornell is 100, starting 165 pounder, Julian Mirage. Julian, welcome back. Welcome back to Clock Talk Stove. Yeah, uh, I've been here before and as Grayson introduced me, I'm a good friend of his. I've known him since I was like 13 and Zach, I've known just about as long because I met him through Grayson, so... There you go. Yeah, I got my my limited edition Cornell wrestling shirt. Um, mm. For as long as I've known Julian, you'd be like, oh, yeah, Julian helped Grayson and he got him a T-shirt. But I got it from Chris Foca, who I knew for about a week and a half. <laughs> because Julian doesn't – Julian's never hooked me up with any gear at all. No Blair gear, nothing at all, nothing. Actually, I think he gave me a Lehigh T-shirt. I think that's about it. Mm. And look what happened. like a camp. <laughs> it well, a actually, actually – <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure your mom got that for you. Yeah, like what? You think I'd get hooked up with some gear? I get nothing. I get nothing. <laughs> get nothing. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyway, oh um, I lose clothes. To be fair, I this is like the only shirt I don't even I couldn't find that shirt in my drawers today. <laughs> so, do you they do they give you like a they give you a clothing package, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's for NCAs only. So like only the. Ten guys have this. So, like, like, how does that work? Like, when you when you, the season starts, they just like here's everything you want, and they just give it to you, or like you have to buy it. How does no? Well, no, no, we don't. We don't buy it. We have a clothing store, so we just go in and grab stuff. Um, we get a package. It's not like crazy big. I mean, Penn State's is definitely large. Yeah, this is um, definitely bigger than like ninety percent of the schools. Like, I'm not gonna complain about it, but I couldn't say like we get a crazy amount of gear. A part of that's Ivy Leagues, man. I mean, we're oh, not. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, it our level. If we were literally any, if we were Missouri, like Missouri gets hooked up. Like, it's not just Big Ten, where yeah. <laughs> Ivy League has definitely a less of a love for. Sports. Now, I couldn't say that that's not like that. We don't get taken care of either. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have like a? Do you guys have like a catalog or something, or like you said, you just walk in? But like, are you allowed to take as much as you want, or like they no, like? No, so I mean, we could also purchase some of our gear um, for a lot cheaper than like the average person could purchase. Gear. Yeah, like a, like an athlete discount or something. But, but, but like what Grayson said, I mean, you can't purchase that shirt. That shirt is one of yeah, what's up. What's it's, up? A, it's a team March shirt. So like, there's different gear for sure. I mean, like this is. Only 10 people have it, so it's even more, like, mm -hmm. I mean, and the coaches and our athletic trainers. Yeah, y'all are y'all are Nike now, right? Because you used to be yeah. Asics. I mean, we've switched a lot. We were Asics. We were um, Scrap Life for a time. But, I How mean, that? Uh, I wasn't part of it, but, I mean, I have the gear. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, I could have given you that gear. You wanted something dope. <laughs> You told me I, Nike. I was like, bro, I lost my Nike stuff. So that's why I get, you got that from Foca. But I like I like the Nike. I like the Nike. Uh when I was when I was verbally committed to Mount Union, they were just going from like A6 or they went from Rudis to Nike. Yeah. They had like all their like gear displayed. And like I was I really like the Nike. I never I don't think I've ever worn a Nike singlet though. I mean, honestly though, like this is the one thing I'm gonna say about Nike compared to the other ones, is we get a lot of gear from Nike compared to the other ones. But I prefer shoes over Nike wrestling the shoes. Asics shoes, right? No, no. So we used to what have. What did you say? It cut out when you said the shoe name. Sorry, I prefer to have Asics shoes or yeah. Adidas shoes over Nike wrestling shoes. But I mean, I, I like. I still like them. I can't. Oh, like boy. I mean, does anybody make shoes outside of you have Nike make shoes, Adidas makes shoes. I mean, I guess. A6, I like Rudis is starting to make shoes now. Yeah, I mean, a A6 is probably the oldest brand that makes shoes. Yeah, but I think Adidas might be the sexiest. <laughs> I would agree with What's that. What's, like, the biggest I, I difference? I love Adidas, though. but the thing with the A6 is, like, um, A6 has all the Olympic champs. Yeah. So, like, so you don't have a branded, like, the you can't. So, Kyle was, uh, he was, still might be, I'm not sure, was sponsored by A6 for the longest time. But without being an Olympic champ, he didn't have a ASICs branded shoe. Yeah, but now he does, right? And he's not an Olympic champ. But now he has his own shoe. Yeah. Well, they're making his own shoe, but it's not ASICs. 
Oh, all right, Zach. So to go back to what you said about the difference. So yeah, is there like a big difference? Yeah, so I feel like between like, like clothing. A, a Adidas, like with the Adidas wrestling shoe, every single one they cup your heel. Like the bottom mm. of any Adidas wrestling shoe is like hard and it, it cut like literally like grabs your heel. Um, with with the Asics, I feel like they're they make so many different kinds of wrestling shoes. Yeah, like, I I hate like the most one of the most popular shoes is the uh, the aggressors, and I hate the aggressors. Mm-hmm. I don't like how they feel on my feet. I feel like they're too wide, and it's like I feel like when I wear it, my foot slides off the bottom of it. I don't like that. Now my my favorite shoes of all time, my P twos, which were which were Asics, but um yeah I I don't. I like Asics a lot. My, right now, my go-to is my Nike Freaks. And they're reliable. I've had it for like four years. I lo- I'm a big Combat Speeds, which is Adidas. And then um, I also like the foreign shoes that, like, I would say the name. But they're just the Asics Tigers. And, like, they're, like, the ones that all the Japanese guys wear and Russian guys. And Yanni's a huge fan of them. Yeah. like And, like, the thing about, like, shoes and socks and wrestling is, like, it's a kind of a big deal because you don't have, like, you know, it's not like football and basketball, even with like sleeves and all this stuff. Like you're very limited to what you can wear. So like shoe game and wrestling is like a really big deal. Like you have kids, especially like younger kids and like high school kids throughout the entire country, at like big tournaments. They're just, they're like, they'll sit outside and just like line up all their shoes. And you just, it's like a, oh, free it's a whole, like, yeah, you find out, you find out who's going to be a businessman really quick. In yeah. It's like, crazy, bro. There's, 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 there's like some professions people, out of it. Some people go out to like this tournament called Fargo and like, they don't really care about wrestling. They go out to sell. They go out to flip and sell wrestling gear. Kids, these kids will go out with I've known I've known kids who go out with two three singlets, and come back with five thousand dollars worth yeah, of crazy gear, things. money, shoes, crazy like whatever you can name it. And but like, the thing is, is like it's not like football where it's like what looks the coolest. It's all about like what the oldest shoe is. Like obviously, there's perks of it. It looks like like it's like the like, like rarest shoe. You can't get a hold of. It's like yeah, exactly. more limited. Sorry, the more limited it is, that's what it is. It, it's not necessarily old. Yeah, well, it's like you want shoes that they don't make anymore, like yeah. Rulons and P twos. Like they don't make them anymore. So any of the ones you get is like it's like very limited edition because they don't even make the shoes anymore. Why don't they make them anymore? Like discontinuation. Like I, I feel like it's a Julian question. I have no idea. Yeah. Now for it's singlets. Like, for singlets, is it all the same material or does it kind of vary between like what kind of material they use for singlets? Really different. Oh, there's a lot of different material. I mean, I like, um, I like Nike singlets a lot. I'll give them that. Mm-hmm. I do like Nike singlets a lot. Uh, Adidas makes pretty solid singlets. Mm-hmm. There's a, a lesser popular company that makes good ones that i don't want to name right now because if i mistake it then i'll be Dude, I, the best thing that i ever wore as a as a as a competitor was rudis i loved the rudis singlet if it's so oh, like, rudis it's like pretty solid singlets too yeah, it was um but basically the way it works is like a lot of people don't like sometimes it itches your leg um some of them are just like way too tight on the leg the leg is usually the problem yeah. uh and like it just all kind of depends on how like the material of the actual singlet is. If it's like, give me stiff. Uh, I know it sounds stupid, but you can have a stiff singlet. And like, like it can hard be hard really to get cool. into. Like, yeah, like kind of like our football jerseys were senior year. Like they were just uncomfortable. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah they look cool. Yeah, but yeah, wait, yeah. Julian. Go speaking on this. What are your thoughts on like now? Even in the college level, kid, you can wear a rash guard and 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 shorts when you wrestle. What do you think about that? I don't really care what other people do. I don't like it. Yeah. Um, mm. Not because of the shorts part. Shorts is understood. Uh, people are like, oh, yeah, you always wear a shirt in practice. Yeah, but I wear a shirt like this, you know, like, or I wear a shirt, the, the one you're wearing. That's literally what we have to wear in practice. Yeah. So, like, I don't wear a tight fit shirt that's in my, like, armpit, you know, and I hate, since I since I could remember, I've hated those shirts. Mm. You know, like, so I'm not a fan of it personally. Um, and, uh, I don't mind wrestling it. I don't mind wrestling it. It's just like wrestling in practice. You, know? like you wearing it in wrestling or someone else? Like the kid you wrestling? Oh, someone else like wearing it. Like I'm pretty sure Carson Karch wore it at Vegas. No, maybe not. Someone wore it this year wrestling me. Not Karch. Well. So, so what's like the tactical like advantage or dis- disadvantage from wearing like rash guards or shorts? I do you think it like helps? I think you're more an advantage in a singlet. It's like, it's like less to grab. I mean, it's, 
Not wait, wait, wait. Like like what? you're not grabbing the actual material, but I feel like a singlet they slide it's easier to slide out of, and it's like it makes them thinner. Yeah, I feel like it's a disadvantage if you're wearing it. That's what I'm saying. No, I, I think it, I think the singlet is I mean, harder to wrestle against than a rash guard in shorts. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. I mean, in freestyle, yeah. I don't think you could physically wear a shirt because it's a lot like oh yeah, it, it would get it would help them so much. Like Greco. No. So what? What caused like the sudden change with bringing in like rash guards and shorts? Like, was there like a demand for it? Like, they just wanted an hour. I think it's entertainment because wrestling's starting to get bigger because of MMA, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. because of that, like, it makes people more appeal to the sport than if they're looking at my crotch. Yeah, and like it makes kids like like I think well, first of all, I think part of it's for comfortability. Like, it makes it makes people want to like not be forced to wear a singlet. And like it gets more kids in there, and like in their opinion, it gets more kids to do the sport. Not, like, no, no, like, the only agree. reason kids aren't wrestling is because they're wearing a singlet. They're like, oh, it's not for me. You know? Yeah, and I mean, I, yeah, I understand it, but at the same time, it's like, like, it's, like, it's not. No, that big of a deal, had, no it's really a, not that big of a deal to wear a singlet. I understand yeah. it, but I've had so many friends that once they actually just broke that little insecurity that didn't care about it. Bro, if you look good, you should feel comfortable in a singlet. Like that yeah. shouldn't be a, like it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Like you really shouldn't. I don't know. It's just a stigma about it, like from people making fun of them and stuff. But I mean I, I'm for it in the aspect of it. If it helps grow wrestling, I'm all about growing the sport of wrestling. I agree. Yeah. I agree hundred percent. Now uh, speaking no, about I that would, I would not be I would not be for them forcing us to wear it either. I agree. Yeah I agree. Oh yeah. Yeah. 100%. But, um, Julian, you brought up earlier Fargo. Now, is that a college level or high school level, high school level. Uh, wrestling? High school. That's a high school level. Event. Okay. So, speaking of, like, high school level events, like Super 32, Ironman, Beast of the East, what would you say is, like, the most beneficial or, like, best high school wrestling tournament for, like, high school kids? Beneficial is a hard thing to, to say because the way wrestling works is, like, all those tournaments you named, there's going to be college coaches watching. No, oh, yeah. Like, like, whether they're there or at home, being that I want to be a college coach, like, recruiting is huge. You cannot not watch Ironman, Powerade, Super 32, like, Fargo. All those tournaments you Knockout. Have. Knockout is honestly a tournament that, like, it, like, it not might be watched, but every coach wants to know the results of it. That's for sure. Like, well, dude, I think every kid that won that won their bracket and knockout this year was nationally ranked. No, and that that's the thing. Like, it's it's not as broadcasted, which is yeah. why it might not be as watched. But I know college coaches go down to watch it. Yeah, for sure. It's just not like it's not Iron Man because Iron Man's been broadcasted for fifty years. Okay, so let's talk about in terms of recruitment wise, what uh, including Fargo. I forgot to add. That's the tournament I forgot to add to the list. I was telling you about Zach, including Fargo. What tournament you think is most beneficial? Like recruitment wise for like getting That's what I'm saying there. like, it, it, like it, it, it no like you have to win it I'm not winning but you have to you have oh, to no shit Julian thanks no no, no 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 but I'm saying like I'm saying you have to beat people it's like it doesn't matter if you go to Fargo or Super 32 you just have to go to as many as you can and beat as many good people if as you, you win like look if you win you, let me go you, look, if you win any of these tournaments if you win Super 32 NHSCA Iron Man Beast of the East, Powerade, Knockout of Prep Nationals, or Fargo, you're getting recruited. You're getting recruited. Yeah, you're getting recruited. Listen, listen, I'll tell you this much. The way wrestling works is you beat one good kid, you're getting recruited. Yeah, 100%. Oh, so good question on that. Who was your one good kid you beat that, like, put you on the map, you feel like? Like, what kid did you beat? I I know you started in eighth grade, but what kid did you beat from, like, eighth grade on in high school that you felt, like, solidified? Let me give my perspective of someone that's known Julian. Yes. Julian was Julian came onto the scene in the state of Florida. At least I'm just talking about from the state of Florida perspective in seventh grade when he took third at States. Cause like, it wasn't like he was unknown, but it wasn't like, no one was like the seventh graders. Like it was just like, he's a good rep. He's a good private school kid from Miami. Like that shit happens. It happens. What, in way, what grade, way was he seventh grade? What way was he seventh grade? 13. And then and oh, wow. is in eighth grade, he goes at 38, which was the most stacked division, like the most stacked division to it. Awesome division. Yeah. It was disgusting. It was, it was, awesome him. it was, it was, uh, what's his name from Springstead, who I thought was going to be, who was going to beat Julian. Then you had, uh, what, yeah, what was his name? Andrew Smith. Andrew Smith. And then you had Doback from Brandon. And you had, there was a, a filthy kid from Lake Gibson. 
No, Brandon. There was a fil- no. There was no. There was a kid from Lake Gibson too, because the all top three kids were all in the same district, all, all same region. Oh, uh, tell me with a T. I, I know it doesn't matter. The kid, the kid it doesn't matter. Something it, Titus, Titus, Titus. Yeah, Titus. Something Titus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Julian, his eighth grade year, has Andrew Smith in the semis, who everyone thinks is the best kid in the state, but he went through an injury like the last two years, so he like kind of rested and then like saved up for the postseason. And Julian dogs, yeah. Julian dogs him. Like, like low score them? match, but like, like, oh no, no, like, like it wasn't. I just dominated the whole match. Yeah, like there was never a time where it was like it was a 50 50 match. Like Julian was constantly winning. And then in the finals, he wrestles Doe back from Brandon, who's like supposed to mop Julian. Like he's supposed to like destroy the hype train. And Julian gets in a scramble and freaking pins him in a minute and like 15 seconds. And then the kid goes to his corner, goes to Kozar, who's like legendary high school wrestling coach from Brandon. Like there's an ESPN. 60 on the 60 for 60 on them, whatever it's called, like 30 for 30. There's a whole thing on him. Tell us the kid, though, back, like, you should quit wrestling. You just lost to a middle schooler. And the kid quit and started weightlifting. Quit. Jeff is a good kid, though. And he Great was kid. No shit on, on Doe back at all. It's, I'm trying to shit on Kozart. Hell of a wrestler, too. Yeah, Kozart, I'm not a fan of. But, um, I mean, funny story. I was supposed to go to Brandon all the way up until that point. And it's not because. I beat his kid in the finals. I, I mean, for all I cared, I was like, I'm still going there. I want to train with the kid I just beat. That's great. You know, like, no. Cozart never spoke another word to me after that. Never heard of, never have said a single word to that guy since the eight, my eighth grade state finals match. After I shook his So, hand. you so talked about. I think when he came on the scene. That's when he, like, really blew now, up. Now, okay, so I agree with him because. I was well known in Florida, but that made me well known nationally as well. Like I wasn't like that was that's not what put me on the stage nationally, but that's definitely what like going into high school. I was like they figured I'd do pretty decent, you know. Um, I'd say I it wasn't a specific match. I mean, probably a specific match. Luke Troy, uh, my freshman year at Ironman, I beat him in the round of 16, I believe. And he was the number five kid in the country. But it was like I beat him by injury default. So that's why it wasn't like it was he I was just winning when he injured a football. So like you're saying he would have beaten you. We don't know. But I then guess I, we'll never know. <laughs> but then but then I took fifth at Iron Man as a freshman, and like that's what put me on the stage. So taking fifth at Iron Man, like uh now going back to your question. What tournament do I think is the hardest? Ironman. Yeah, Ironman. You never won Ironman, did you? Yeah, and it's not even just because of that. I mean, like, I could have won Ironman, and I would still tell you there's, like, as far as the closest representative to, like, the national tournament, it's a 32, maybe a 64-man bracket. Invite only. Invite only. Invite only. Mm -hmm. And it's not like Fargo, like, Invite only, but we're still trying to make money and get. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's like if you don't, if they don't send you a letter, you cannot wrestle there. If you're not good. They won't let you. Yeah, they're not. Like, I know so. people who've been denied. Like, you so know, how would you earn a letter? You have, to, like a state, you, have to, you have to apply. You have to apply, kind of. But like, okay. they have to step to you. Yeah, but it's so, like crazy, bro. It's deep. Like, yeah, like, I mean, like it's really Julian to- never won. Artelona never won. Frankie Tauschar won Ironman and then didn't win states after that. Put it this way. It's the, it's one of the only in-season tournaments that, like, if you don't um, have, like, a good enough team, you can't take your whole team. Yeah. Like, they will not let you bring – like, they'll only let you bring one guy. If you have one good guy, that's all you're bringing. Damn. So, so they're very like, picky. So there's, like, 100 teams, but, like, 30 of them have like less than three guys. I would say it's it's probably the closest thing to a college to like a college level atmosphere too. Yeah, the no, because, finals is sold out. It's packed. It, yeah. And it it's but it's a hectic tournament. Now, if you win Super 32 or Fargo, that's way more hype behind it. Like I feel oh, like there's more super, I feel like there's more um there's like more there's more like history to those, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, like I wouldn't even say history in the sense of like they're just out of season tournaments. I don't even know. So like there's not a lot of them. And they're so like yeah. prestige that like, oh, like you win those tournaments. So I mean, if you win any of those tournaments, coaches know you're good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like, that's yeah. all I can tell you. If you take top four in any of those tournaments, coaches know you're good. Top eight, the majority of weight classes in those tournaments, coaches know you're good. Now, Julian, so you went – you so you went – Eighth grade year state champ. All right, sorry. Seventh grade, third place, right? Mm-hmm. Seventh grade, third place is in Florida. Blend Jesuit Miami. Eighth place, Blend Jesuit Miami, 138 state champ. Then his freshman year of high school, transfers, moves to Brandon, wrestles at, at Jesuit Tampa with us. And your freshman season, I think you had under three minutes of mat time combined in your state tournament your freshman year. Something then, like then Blair Academy starts hitting your line. What was it like, you know, for you to be at that young age and have to kind of go through the battle in your head of, do I go to be one of the, like, the five or six only ever five-time state champs in the state of Florida, or do I go become just another name? Not, not, not just another name, but, like, I go to be, like, not the best ever from Blair. Um, not, it was, like, now that you bring it up, I didn't even think about it twice. Which really? kind of makes me, yeah, it kind it kind of hit me weird when you asked me that. Um, because you tell me that didn't go through your mind at all. All right, let, let, here's the context. If Julian would have stayed know. in Florida, it was like a 99 percent positive he was gonna be a five time state champ, which I believe would have been like the fifth or sixth ever in Florida wrestling history. Or he goes to Blair Academy, which is the most prestigious wrestling school ever in high school wrestling, and becomes another great wrestler from there, but not. Like Julian Ramirez Blair Academy, you know, like. No, I mean, honestly, like it was my dream to be a seven time state champ since like third, fourth grade. Um, and, you know, like I failed that obviously sixth grade and seventh grade. Pretty year. hard to do that, you know. Yeah, but I would have been the only one, whether I was a six or a seven timer, I would have been the only Florida one. I mean, if I, I would have been the only one in the country. Yeah. Was, the only, there's only like, I think now there's a seven timer maybe, but I know there's only like two, six timers ever. Um, Mark Hall being one of them. And then, no, I mean, Blair was hitting my line kind of seventh grade and eighth grade year, but it was not a question because my mom didn't want me going there. And then my freshman year, uh, like I had a very dominant season and um, I had great coaches at Jesuit and I definitely was going to have good partners but it wasn't that as much as a competition. You know, I like, they go to hard competitions, but it's just like the love, the level of wrestling in the Northeast is uh, insane. I mean, you Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and then all the outskirts states are about the same level as Florida. And, but you have those three right there who are just like, I feel like also too, if, if you were at the Jesuit now, it would have been a lot harder of a decision to make. Because you, when when you were transitioning into Blair, was kind of like the start of Sal and Jesuit Wrestling Empire. For sure, for it wasn't sure. like where it's at now, where it's like those kids are staying, still going to the same level tournaments as Blair and yeah. getting well. But you were in the beginning of it, so it would have been like it was kind of you didn't know what was going to happen. Yet. I didn't know what was going to happen, and yeah. on top of that, like I, like part of it's exposure, man. Like you asked me what, like just being on the team whether you're B team or C team, the exposure you get, like, uh, again, no discredit to Sal because Sal brings more coaches into Florida than I've seen ever. Like Sal is, has an unbelievable resume for the state of Florida, but I mean, Kale Sanderson, Rob Cole, um, John Smith, you, Coleman Scott, Mike Gray, you name the guy he's walked through Blair Academy's room. And just sat down. So football players who are wrestling just to wrestle met Kale Sanderson. Like, you know, we <laughs> to put Blair on the map, we had um, I'm sorry, my this knowledge of football. Who's the Michigan coach's name? Harbaugh. Harbaugh. Yes. Harbaugh walked into our wrestling room just to watch 20 minutes of wrestling. Just because to be like the most because, elite program. Because his game. football recruit was in there. That's crazy. Like, bro, I shook hands with Harbaugh. So some people would like pay a million dollars to do that. Now, yeah. um, when you went to Blair, what was that transition like? Like, you know, going from Jesuit, where uh, you were like, you and Adam are the top two guys in the room. Then you had Ethan come in. Like, it was still like there's still guys. 
that were solid, but then you go into Blair and everyone's Julian Ramirez level. You know, like what was that like? like, and then, like also, what was it like from the perspective of of getting better too and like learning from those kids? It was awesome. I mean, like being around like tw- twenty guys who are all ranked in the country is. <laughs> You can't ask for that. I mean, it's like being a part of a college wrestling team. Like, the that's another part that made Blair amazing. Like, you go to Blair, Sem, like, Bergen Catholic. Like, you have an idea of what you want from a team, you know? Like, that's one thing that might be hard for a lot of wrestlers is, like, there's a lot of homegrown wrestlers that come from, like, a one or maybe maybe three or four good guys, you know? Like, going to Blair, like, you know exactly what you want out of the people that you are surrounding yourself with. Because when you go to college, it's that you're getting put into a crew of 10 to 40 guys who are just beasts. Like yeah. the guys who suck are state champs from the, their state. Like, you know, like well, no matter what. So I think that that's Blair was just being in that competitive room uh, made me better. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, no. I, especially my sorry for cutting you off. Especially my no, weight, I was one fifty two, so I like one fifty two to one seventy. I like to go from everybody to one thirteen all the way to two twenty. Like I wrestled with the six and two eighty five pounder, but that's not often. Like I actually wrestled with Chase Singletary every single power hour, which is the day before a tournament, my sophomore year, and I was a fifty two pounder. He was two twenty, but that's yeah. what I like to do. So you talked about the possibility of like transferring to like Brandon or like some of these other schools that like came to mind, but like, what do you think was like the deciding factor for Blair? Like, was it just the history behind it that really like cemented, like this was where my future needed to be or what kind of drew you there? I mean, what drew me there was just the prestige of going to Blair Academy wrestling. Um, I, to be fair, my seventh and eighth grade year, I did a lot of research into it. I looked into Franklin regional uh, Wyoming Seminary, Bergen Catholic. I've looked into all those schools. But then, like, my eighth grade year, I pretty much narrowed it down to just about Blair and Sem. But I never really got recruited by Sem because we didn't have a pipeline there. At Jersey, we had – and uh, for Blair, we had Moscow, who just left my school and went there. And we had Sherman and Chase, who I've known since I was 10 years old. And then so, we went with the same time as you as well. And Leo went with me. Yeah. yeah. So like, uh, I, mean, they, I that's why I've been kind of talking to Blair since I was a seventh grader. Sherman and I wrestled as sixth grader, Zach Sherman. He goes to UNC. And he immediately told the coaches about me because we were best friends at the time. We were young and we still are. We, I talk to him all the time. But now, You think that Blair room and like the coaching and, and the wrestling, the, the schedule you guys wrestled, um real quick also by the way dude your high school record was 143 and 10 that's insane you know with the record you wrestled at Blair but um do you think that made the transition into Cornell easier like it made it it made it you know like a you didn't you didn't feel as far behind as you thought you were or like you thought the college room I don't know just it was it an easier transition versus like it's it's someone that wasn't from like a Blair the college room isn't one like I mean Okay, yeah, it probably made my college room transition easier. College competition, there's, like, like I'm telling you, there's very little like it. Like, Yeah, of course, that's not what I meant. I meant, like, the transition from, like, learning yeah, I mean, and training and stuff from Blair that, that help you get prepared and stuff at Cornell. Yes, yes, I mean, I'd say so, for sure. College competition is going to be amazing no matter where you're at. Like, you can have NAIA guys that are monsters, like. Uh, yeah, of course. And like, I mean, my transition to college wrestling, my, fro- my frog year was a terrible year. I, I mean, I would not, everybody would say it's awful, but in my eyes and anybody who has the same, who has the same knowledge of my potential as what I did my frog year, like they would say that, like, I was pfft, terrible. Now, why, why, <laughs> that? Wait, real quick, explain what your frog year is. So they, my you know, frog year is a gray shirt year that like, so in Ivy leagues, you can't, take a red shirt year unless you are either going to the Olympics or you have a medical red shirt. Um, so a gray shirt year is just kind of like a way to go to community college and train up here. And you could do it for going to any school. Technically I have, I know people who've gone to frog year and just gone other places on purpose. Most people try and come here though. Um, 
Now, my frog year, I had seven losses. So it's almost as much as my high school career. You yeah. know? Um, it was the first time I've ever gone to and out of the tournament. And I got pinned four times, which is just about the same amount of times I've been pinned in my entire life. Um, so, it, yeah, I, that says it. What do you <laughs> What do you think? What do you think that did for you, like mentally, like to help rebuild yourself? Because I know at first it may seem like, at first you don't really recognize it as like a humbling experience. It takes a while for that to like set in. What kind of like changed for you after that, like frog year? It was very humbling. I mean, uh, I'd say I, the COVID year kind of helped. You know, it just gave me a year to just, like, train, you know. I mean, um, but I would say it just kind of told me, like, hey, just because you're good in high school doesn't mean you're going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if, like, to put it this way, like, I, like, it was a confidence thing. Like in high school, I walked into most tournaments and I knew that like only two guys were really going to compete with me. And now walking into college, if there's 32 guys in that bracket, 31 guys are going to compete with me and I'm the other guy. What was it like, uh, you know, so you went from like being top five. Yeah. I mean, almost number one at one point, I believe maybe no, no you're number two. I don't think you ever hit. Number I was number one for two months, but it was like an intermarry number one, just because I wrestled, uh Karchla, like the year prior but he had a really good year so they wanted to kind of put him number one but they couldn't because I beat him the prior year yeah so and then I wrestled who's number one and I lost it so it was like that was doing that in high school and being like you know every everywhere you went you had, you were the best to going into you know that frog year and just kind of just getting humbled what was going through your mind and stuff then like how were you able like what were you like a little broken through it? Was it like hard? Was it like hard with that adversity? Like how do you overcome it? Like what was what was that time like? A lot, a lot of talking with my mentors. Um, you know, I I have to credit my mom. You know, she definitely helped me a lot. Shout but, out, May. Uh, all my coaches, uh, the, my past ones and my current ones, <clears throat> um, and my teammates. You know, like a lot of Julian, you're you're good. You know, like even if I wrestle well against, even if I don't say anything to them, like my teammates are good, but if I beat them in practice, like that was good for me, you know, that felt good. And like crediting them, you know, like they're good enough that that made my confidence feel better. So just all that stuff, a lot of like self-reflection. Um, I'm still not anywhere close to where I want to be. So yeah, of course. No, no. at that point that hasn't ended. Oh, like I, I have not stopped doing that since I realized, hey, you suck. Like, but you think I, that even though that that time period sucked, it was like extremely beneficial and like kind of a necessity to the success you're having now. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I that nothing happened until I went zero two at Scuffle. I went zero two at Scuffle, and I. It was about a 20 minute span where I was like, I want to quit the sport. And then, <laughs> and then after that, it was all like, uh, I mean, Kyle Dake, I'd have to credit a lot to him. Like when you have one of the best guys in the world telling you that you're not wrestling as well as you should be, it kind of tells you like, Hey, wake up. And uh, he, he sent me out. He could, he may have forgotten this. I don't know. He doesn't forget things sometimes. So, um, but he sent me a super long text and at the end of it, he wrote like bullet points and he goes, I don't care. You write this down right now. And I was like, <laughs> I'll never forget this. I was like, all right, I'll write it down as soon as I get back to the hotel. He goes, no, 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 no. Go grab some paper from the front desk, from the head table and write it down. So I walked up to the head table at Southern, yeah, at Southern Scuffle. Yeah. Yeah. I, I walked into, I walked up to the head table. And I didn't know who to talk to. Everybody looked busy. So I was like, hey, um, I don't remember if it was Nomad or Piles. I was like, hey, like, do you guys have paper for me? Uh, they're both flow wrestling broadcasters. Well, Nomad used to be Piles is now. And I was like, do either you guys have a paper for me? And uh, they came over and they're like, oh, they handed me brackets. They're like, this is the best we can do for you. So at the bottom of the 184 pound bracket, because there was enough space, I wrote down all the bullet points and I had to send him a picture because if not, he wouldn't have let it happen. 
and it's still on my wall in my room. Damn. What were some of the some of the things he wrote on it? If you like, can share it. If not, honest, honestly, I haven't read it, so I like wouldn't want to say it without like. I bet you I could guess half of them, but I haven't read it in a while. It's just posted there, so I know it's there. So what? Yeah. Yeah, so when you got like talking about Kyle Dake, who people don't know, he's world champion, uh, you know, Olympic team member. Like he's he's one of the pinnacles of American wrestling, you know, you got guys like him, you got guys like uh, Yanni Dehakamahalis there, you got Vito Arujo, you got uh, Gwizzes there, you got, ah, you have someone else, I can't remember, I don't know why. John we have Devin Skatska. Yeah, so, so you know, going to Cornell, it's something you know that you're going to have guys like that. What's that been, being around guys like that? You know, we talked about being around, like, like the good guys in high school that are, like, your age and stuff. What's it like now being with, like, Guys are a little bit older and that have kind of like done your path a little and know and know how to do that. What what's that like learning from them and, and rolling with them and stuff? Unbelievable experience. I mean, it, it's not unbelievable in the same way that like someone who wishes they could do that would probably feel it's unbelievable because they part of it's for them, like they would just love to meet Yanni. You know, like it's funny for me because like Yanni is someone I've known since he was like in eighth grade. So I see him around now and everyone like, Oh, I want to get your autograph. And like, you know, people are just fascinated by looking at him. And I think he's just like, he's a funny kid. He's great at wrestling and he's one of my best friends. So, but it's unbelievable in the fact that like, I know they have my right intent, like they have the right intentions for me. And they tell me they, they both have me under their wing, you know, like whether I'm doing well or not, they will tell me. And I will be one of the first people they tell always. And um, especially for someone like Kyle, like Kyle's prioritized himself a lot over the last like decade since he's been on the world stage. And like he, he very minimal prioritizes his time to like everyone else. Now he will de- like, everyone will definitely get a, a sense of Kyle and wrestling Kyle and he'll teach them something. That's not what I'm not, what I'm saying. But as far as like him actually worried about you, like you don't get that often so like me being one of his people like it it's a blessing I can't ask for anything more I mean I looked up to him when I was little my two favorite wrestlers were him and Jordan Oliver yeah um, I'm still a huge Jordan Oliver fan no and I, I'm still a huge Jordan Oliver and Kyle Dake fan um was that <clears throat> was was that like a, a factor like why you wanted to go to Cornell a little bit knowing that you know not only your teammates are going to be amazing but like the guys that are doing the next level stuff that you aspire to do in the near future are also very, very, very talented. Hundred percent. I mean, all my, when I looked at my colleges, I looked at where do I want to spend the next 10 years of my life? Now I'm not saying there's no shot. I leave Cornell when people start offering me money mm-hmm. for world level wrestling. Yeah. I, I would love to stay here. Like this is why I chose here. You know, like mm-hmm. I stayed here throughout COVID despite like all the, shenanigans that happened here and like i cried i i had nights where i literally cried because i didn't know what i wanted to do because this was the place i wanted to be because of the people it, you know like it goes from coach gray to his wife to his kids to kyle dake to his family to yanni to his entire house my house all my teammates like it doesn't matter who it is everyone here we're one big family you know, and like, that's a huge part of it. You could ask any of our 40 guys and they're going to be like, we're a family. Like, and it's pretty amazing. You know, you don't see it often. So, yeah. So coming out of high school, was it always Cornell from like day one? Like you knew it was going to be Cornell or were there some other colleges that like really had your attention at the time that like you were like kind of thinking about leaning towards? It was pretty damn close Cornell the whole time. <laughs> yeah. That's coming from someone who's known me since I was like, Oh, well, young. I've wanted to go here since I was seven. So, all right. Now, so follow up question then. Like a lot. I got that. a little different one. If Cornell just didn't exist and you had to go to another school, what would that school be? See, I never got that far, and I could definitely tell you, like, I could probably tell you where I would transfer to if. She, if everything went down the drain, but I would never say that. So, but I'll tell you where, like, 
what schools I like, you know, like I definitely mm -hmm. liked Oklahoma State. Um, that was one of the schools that I would have gone to since I, a kid as well. You know, I love their style and John Smith, you know, the greatest wrestler America's ever had. It says, says enough. But um, looking at it now, I mean, like I chose the better academic school. So oh. we're be we and wrestling wise, like we have competed with them in the last decade and a half. So I like I'm not w worried about that either. So UNC was another school that I loved a lot. You know, Shout uh, out to great program, Oklahoma State kind of part two. You know, Coleman Scott is uh, an Oklahoma State product. So they definitely like their great school as well. You know, everyone knows that. And then wrestling wise, they have a great program. Um, Zach Sherman is there. So he did a lot of recruiting to try and get me there as well. Uh, and then Virginia Tech is another school and then Rutgers. But like Rutgers, great coaches. Uh, I'm friends with a lot of the guys. And then Virginia Tech, great coaches. I know a good amount of the guys. I, I wanted Julian to go to Lehigh personally. I love the Lehigh coaches, and I felt like if he was going to go there, they would have made him, like, the face of the program. But obviously now I'm very glad he went to Cornell because of everything that's happened and, like, how, how, how Julian's been wrestling and stuff. But during his recruitment process, I was very big on him going to Lehigh. I like Lehigh a lot, too, and that's another one that I, I forgot to mention. Um, they were definitely one of my top four, you know. Now, looking back at it, I would never go to Lehigh. And it's not because of anything against the coaches or anything. It's just, like, I bleed red. So, like, I could never hey, How's that. that? How's the weather, <laughs> dude, like, at, at Cornell? Like, you're, uh, bas you're basically in Canada. You're basically in Canada. Uh, it it's it can definitely get pretty terrible sometimes. But, I mean, in the, like, in the gist of it, like, I don't even care. Like, the summer, I love yeah. It's raining. I mean, today, you wrestle in, for example, <laughs> you wrestle indoors. So, yeah, yeah, dude. But then you have a cold practice, like you're no, sweating and you're burning hot. Cold. And then you go outside, and then that sharp cold, it's like cold and like, it's like a knife. Uh, like, no. <gasps> he doesn't even know it because he's never been up here. I mean, yeah, I can't, that's what I'm saying. I can't even imagine what it's like up there. There's nothing like getting out of practice and you're low on weight and you're just dying. You're hot. Your hair is still wet because you just showered. You walk outside and your hair literally freezes. Like, I kid you not, I get in my car and I pull ice off of my hair. Because no. just because it's wet. And like, but I don't know. Honestly, I don't. With that breathing too, bro. It's like, it's like, it's like a sharp pain. I, I will tell you this much. I will tell you this much. If I didn't go to Blair, it definitely would have been harder. Yeah, no, I agree for sure. I would agree. You got adapted to it a little better. I did get adapted to it. Oh, so speaking on that, do you think wrestlers up north in high school were better than wrestlers down in Florida? Or do you think Florida produces, like, the best wrestling talent? How do you, how do you think Florida compares to, to other states, like, state-wise? Uh, I yeah. mean, it's pretty well known that they're not the best. Um, anybody in Florida will tell you that. It's a competition between Pennsylvania, Jersey, Ohio, and California. And then there's a lot of states that are like, I kind of like put it in tiers, I would say. There's a lot of like tier two states, which are like Oklahoma, mm -hmm. Illinois, Florida, New York, um, Iowa. Uh, and then like, there's more too. So like I, like, I feel like if you put if if you made an all star lineup of every every state with a high school team, you made like an all star lineup. I feel like the, the top the top of Florida kids would do very very good. That's what but I'm the, saying. The depth of Florida is not there. Like like a like a three four yeah. five in a California or in, in one of the state team names is gonna dog of a kid that, that barely placed like a kid that took sixth in Florida is gonna get dogged by a kid that took sixth in like so the way North New Jersey. But the state champs. State champs are very or there's there's top nationally ranked kids that win states in Florida this year every year. Yeah, yeah. And that and that's a th that's kind of like how I like to divide it. You know, like the tier one states are where like you're a state placer, you're good for sure. You know, tier two states are like they their top fourteen guys history would battle with any state, and then tier three is like they have a solid lineup, but they have a few holes. 
And then after that, it's just like they have a few guys, you know. Dude, you know, I was uh, I was at Caveman the other day uh, with Daner coaching, and um, Kai Owen was there, and we were mm-hmm. talking. Dude, there's a lot of Florida kids in uh in EIWA, like mm-hmm. a lot, a there's, lot. There's you, there's Artelona at well, also there's Brindley at Cornell. There's mm-hmm. Artelona at UPenn. There's Ben Golden at UPenn. There's Leo at Harvard. There's Jack Crook at Harvard. There's um Kai Owen at Columbia. There's uh, what's his name? Charles Smalls at Austria. You also have Jack Crook at Harvard. You have Braden Basil at Army and um, Chauvin at Harvard. Crook, um, uh, no, not Crook. Uh, Chauvin, yeah, Chauvin. That's what I meant. Chauvin. Uh, I think it's another one too. You the Prince Brothers Red Navy. Like the EIWA is a lot of Florida kids. Yeah. So what is the EIWA? Just so that because like I'm not really familiar with it. It's the Eastern Intercollegiate Wrestling Association, so it's just like it's their conference. It's it's our conference, okay. and it's basically um, Ivy Leagues, uh, the the like military schools that are out here, out east. It's the whole Northeast, like mm-hmm. Sacred Hearts in it, Hofstra's in it, which is a school in Long Island, Sacred Hearts in New York. Um, so there's just a bunch of different schools. Yeah, Army, Navy, Hofstra, Binghamton. Yeah. Um, Lehigh. I mean, yeah, so all the Ivy's out. I'm not really because, like, with college football, I'm like kind of familiar with like which conferences are kind of like the cream of the crop and which are not. Definitely. How is kind of like the strength of conferences in wrestling? Like, how is kind of like that tier list work out, or is it kind of like everyone's on like an even? Like, yeah, yeah. Rank, what would you rank the conferences from 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 best to worst in Division One? For what year this year? Cause like it, like yeah, yeah, I do agree it changes, but I think regardless, no matter what, Big Ten, always number Big Ten one. number one. Yeah, Big Ten's always number one. Yeah, America. like maybe, maybe you could say like Big Twelve has had. No, it's not. The depth is not the same. The depth is not, not the same. same. Every so you're single, saying the depth? every single school in the Big Ten, every single one, even their worst, like the the worst team, is filthy. They're all good. They're pretty They're all good. And then. Um, so I'm going to say that it go big 10 and then for this year, I like whoever sees this will try and like say that I'm biased, but EIWA, bro. Dude, no, bro. Shut up. No, 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 no. And I'll Shut tell you, right now, I'll tell you right now. Look at the allocations, bro. Look at the allocations. Dude, no. Yes. ACC or big 12 is number two. No, 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 no. So. So this is what I'm going to say. We're going to start. We're pulling up receipts. This is the thing. We're ACC, making a poll on Twitter. ACC, ACC is super difficult because they have so little allocations. But ACC, Yeah, bro, but I don't want to hear about ACC, allocations, Julian. I want to hear about. No, no, but that's how. What do you mean? You're asking death. Like, that, the death is how do you get to NCAs? Okay, 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 okay ready? NC, AC, NC State, number four. Virginia Tech, number eight. Two schools. My point precisely. <laughs> I'm still looking. North Carolina, 23. <laughs> Three. Done. All right, EIWA, you have. Go. Cornell at 10. Mm. Penn at 18. Lehigh. Mm. Princeton, Princeton at 22. On top 30. Lehigh's not on here. It's 3-3, three and three, bro. I don't want to hear you trying to talk sweet. It's 3-3. Three and three. Okay, but the, okay. So ACC, teams, ACC is ACC is better. No, it's not. ACC is better. No, it's not. Big Twelve, you got actually the Big Twelve is kind of oh. ass now. Oh, is it ACC. Missouri? Yeah, no, no. The Big Twelve is Iowa State, Mizzou, Oklahoma State, Northern Big Twelve. Big, Big, Big Twelve is better. Oklahoma is number two. Big Twelve is number two. Big Twelve is number two. Big Twelve is the one I was going to say is number two. But, like, the reason why I said EIW is because we had a lot of places. We had a lot of high places. Because you're in the conference, you were hitting. That's why you're saying EIWA. No, bro. No, some, total, bro, no, no, no. no. Be like, if you look I, at it from a certain perspective, actually, so actually no, no, with the Big Ten. I, there's a the thing. I'm not just curious <laughs> because of me. Other people have said it. Big 12 is the one I was going to say that competes with us. ACC has to be behind us because they, like, they get – so you have three teams, they get like three or four allocations. Yeah, because they have six teams that wrestle, Julian. 
Okay. There's six teams in the conference. My point, if you have to win Maybe one seven. match to go to freaking NCAs, that's not hard. My point precisely. You can't, like, you can't fit. Yeah, dude, but you that. wrestled who? You wrestled who at EIWAs this year? Who'd you wrestle? Four guys who were at NCAA. No, seven guys who are at NCAs. You didn't wrestle seven guys in the tournament. Okay, I wrestled four. <laughs> Get out of here. I did. Revan Casella, Josh Aglinsanya, Lucas Ravano, and – Oh, Grayson's going for receipts. Okay, but I have a question. Oh, I would love for him. Do to you think it's? Like, oh, I'm right. <laughs> no, I'm do, do you know it's? Do you think it's more advantageous for someone that didn't get a lot of hype out of high school to go to some of those smaller like ACC schools where like you only have to beat one or two guys, or do you think that's only going to hurt you in the long run? Doesn't matter, bro. Listen to this in Julian's weight class. If you want to be in a Julian, champion, you gotta... in Julian's weight class right now? Okay, we got. Quincy Monday at four, EIWA. Julian. Oh, no, 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 but this is this year. That, no, like, look, you have to look at last year because that guy was at 57. This, so, I mean, no, this is this year. This is this year going into okay. the season. So yeah. it says Julian Ramirez, sophomore. Mm-hmm. Julian Ramirez, nine, EIWA. Then Brevin Casella, Binghamton, EIWA, 20. Lucas Ravano, Penn at 21. And then Evan Bar- Bar- Kozak at Drexel That's- at 25. Okay. <clears throat> For Big 12. It's number one, Keegan Tool, Mizzou. Number three, David Carr. Number eight, Peyton Hall, West Virginia. Number 13, UNI, Austin Yant. Number 12, no, excuse me, number 14, Travis Whitlake, Oklahoma State. Number 18, Oklahoma, Garrett, I don't even know how to say that last name. Number 22, Mikey Calendino, North Dakota State. Dude, it, it's Big 12 is better. Okay. There's literally Jason, Jason, Jason. The you wanna, okay, okay. You're arguing with someone who doesn't, okay. You don't know. Ready for this. You are right. Next year, Big 12 might be more difficult. Yeah, that's what I'm year, saying. This year at my weight, you want me to tell you how many kids are ranked at Big 10? Seven. You want me to tell you how many were ranked in EIWA? Seven. You want me to tell you how many were ranked at Big 12? Six. Get out of here, bro. Who won your bracket? Who won your bracket? Who won your bracket? At what, EIWAs? No, in NCAAs. Keegan O'Toole. Which is? Big 12. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Oh okay, okay, okay. So are you asking what's harder or what's harder to win? No, no, no. No, we're no, done. no we're, done with this. we're done with this talking point. Moving on. Am I wrong, Zach? Moving on with this talking point. You're, you're, you're asking a guy who did wrestling for like two weeks his opinion oh. on wrestling matters. You're going to get a wrong answer regardless. No, no, no. It's basic common sense. The better Dude. guy or, like, harder to go to NCAs. You're asking conference. The last time I watched wrestling was when you body slammed Gunther in my backyard <laughs> at, like, 3 in the morning. That was the last time I saw a suplex. Awesome. By the way, that was still the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> but – um, Well, let's move on from that. Julian, going yeah, back yeah. to the high school wrestling. So I was talking to Zach about the difference of folk style and freestyle earlier. Do you, what do you, so for people that don't know, folk style is only done in America and freestyle is done internationally. And folk style is more of a method where like you want to take them down and like pin them to the ground and hold them down. And freestyle is more back exposure. It's like take them down, roll them, throw them, get their back exposed. And we're the only country in the world that does folk style. We also do freestyle, but like we dedicate a lot to folk style. What do you think about this? Do you think America should stop doing folk style or like, do you think it's hurting us internationally for the older le- age? Like what, what is your thoughts on that? It's never, we're never going to stop. That's never going to happen. How close to folk style rules are they going to migrate close to freestyle? I believe it, they'll migrate pretty close. I mean, what's the reason why, why do we do folk style? Safety purposes. Mm. Why do we, why, why do we have American football? So we don't play rugby. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Damn. <laughs> you know, like I'm same. I mean I, now, do we have any tournaments where like people will come from like internationally to wrestle in folk style tournaments or like that just no, like is they don't do it at all, bro? They only do it if they tr- if they like end up living in America. College. A lot of guys do it because they want to get a college degree and also wrestle. 
So like mm -hmm. you have um, most commonly we see guys in the Pan Ams. So you see like Cuba, Canada, um, me like Mexico, like guys who are close. But I mean, we definitely have some Russian, there's a Russian guy I, or Belarusian Soviet Union in uh, the Northeast. He goes to Harvard, I believe. Like we, there's a bunch of guys like from around the world who try and get a college degree so they come wrestle folk style. But um, no, I would say like that it's very foreign for them. Like I, I know this because we have Canada guys who come in and train often. And like, it's funny them watching, watching them wrestle folk style. Yeah, but I feel like it hurts us as a country. Like we could be having the kids develop so much faster. I also think it does not hurt us. Uh, in I think not. freestyle is also much more enjoyable to watch, and it would get a larger following from the public. I'm gonna tell you why it doesn't hurt us in freestyle, because we only got good at the world stage because of people like Dan Gable, who were gonna bully you into the ground, you know, and like. He wasn't the best technician at all. Like everyone knows who Dan Gable is because of what he did, but he was a beast. He wrestled the Iowa style. He's the one that made the Iowa style what it is. Iowa became Iowa because of Dan Gable. Dan Gable would just bully people. And um, that, was, that was like our, like if you ask foreigners, how do we wrestle? We bully people. Yeah. That started because of Iowa and Dan Gable. So you're saying, you're and saying that, that's hold on. folk style. That has become folk style all around in college wrestling. Grayson, what is the hardest thing about college wrestling? Top and bottom. After that, hand fighting. Yeah. Hand fighting is what makes us bullies. So that's what's made us, at even at the world stage, the best wrestlers. Yeah, but you can hand fight in freestyle. What do, yeah, my point. No, but I'm saying is that I don't understand. So what you're trying to, you're saying like what style makes you tougher than freestyle does? Folk style definitely makes you tougher than freestyle. Now why? Because of Iowa and the way college wrestling has progressed because of Iowa and Iowa State. But what is it about the actual form of folk style that makes it? I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just trying to ask. Is it because you're, you're riding somebody out? Freestyle like, is an art. Freestyle. If you ask me, and like probably a lot of foreigners would agree, it's an art. You know, like it's just like there's so many different like little things you could do that would completely change the way a match can progress. There, there's guys who are definitely not better than other guys in freestyle, like in folk style that like in freestyle, boom, match over 10 seconds, you know, like freestyle. There, it's a there's a lot of art to it in folk style. It's very brute. You know, there's definitely art to it, but it's very brute. You know, you have to wrestle hard for seven minutes, you know, to get up. You can't be down. If you lay down on the mat, put it in folk style. If you lay down on the mat, you give up a point and you're going to call for stalling 10,000 times. Yeah. In they're going to beat you up. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna beat your ass. Yeah. In freestyle, you get taken down and you're like, let me try and lay down as hard as I possibly can. <laughs> you know like that's it's the opposite. still hard it's still hard though like still hard i'm not saying it's not but it's a it's a neutral game and it's very artistic you know there's things that happen in freestyle that are just like gorgeous that yeah. that's style. what i'm saying it'd be more enjoyable i think you would grow the sport more in america i agree but so you talked earlier in the about like people like jim harbaugh and like football coaches coming into your wrestling rooms to recruit players now were multi-sport athletes usually like towards one style of wrestling? Like where you, would you find most football players to be Greco wrestlers or like freestyle folk style? Football, football is definitely folk style because they're only wrestling because they're in high school, you know, like, so like their coaches are like, Oh, you're a linebacker, D lineman, O lineman, go in that wrestling room and go work out. Yeah. yeah. Now, what do you think about, I mean, for MMA? What do you think is the best? I think you can argue all three. I think you, I think all three have an argument. You can argue all three. I personally believe Greco is the best because every single Greco guy, no matter what country, has messed around in freestyle or folk style. You mm -hmm. know, so like they've grabbed the leg. Now the thing with them is, in free in MMA, coming from someone who started with MMA. Most of the times, people get takedowns are in a clinch. So you don't have to be fast at all. 
you don't have to be really that explosive at all. You know, like to get a takedown in MMA, it's technique and position. And that's the biggest focus in Greco. You get it from a clin- from a clinch, you know, like from being close. I yeah. think so. I think you could argue all three. I think I agree with Julian, though. I think if I had to absolutely pick one, I'd pick Greco because the concept of it is so similar to MMA. Like you're literally fighting hands. Like you're, you're fighting hands, ducking hands. Like, yeah. and also like the gap from like elite wrestling to MMA wrestling is so large already that now you're going to throw a guy that does Greco. It's like, they don't even know like what's, what's going on, you know, like it's such a big difference. So these guys that already aren't that good at stopping a takedown, they're not going to want to stop a head and arm or like a, a suplex or anything like that. I think you can argue freestyle because it's the best neutral in wrestling. Those guys are going to have the, the best takedowns. They're going to have the nicest throws. Like they're going to be like very well-rounded. And I think folk style you could argue because you could just pin somebody down and hold them. Like you could just like sit them down. You're, you're used to riding guys, you know, like that's, that's like the best part of it. So yeah. I, that that's is why the, I think you could argue all three of them. That, yeah. The part of, like mat control would definitely help you in like uh what's it called MMA the most folk yeah. style but um I don't know I mean Matt for me for me I personally think that if you're gonna be a ground game guy in jiu-jitsu you're not a wrestler you're a jiu- I mean in MMA you're a jiu-jitsu guy you know mm-hmm. like because in realistically like the thing that wrestlers do that they're so good at every good MMA fighter is a ground and pound guy. He's taking you down and just, you know, not many of those guys are jujitsu, which is more yeah. of control on MMA standpoints. So you brought up um, jujitsu and kind of like molding it with wrestling. I wanted to just get your opinion on what you think about the matches they've kind of been setting up recently. I know we saw um, Bo Nickel go against, um, what's his name? I don't know. Uh, Gordon, Gordon Ryan. Gordon Ryan, yeah, like we started to see more like exhibition type stuff set up between like the different t- types of martial arts. Me personally, I just kind of wish we'd see more jujitsu guys at least attempt wrestling matches, but I think honestly they're a little too scared to get slammed through the ground. Um, because I mean, we even saw Ryan get absolutely suplexed by Nickel in their exhibition, even though he ended up losing. And but I just wanted like your opinion. I'm saying this and I'm bringing some heat with it. I think jujitsu guys are not afraid of being thrown to the ground. They're afraid of losing. Yeah, I agree. Mm. I think, I think, I think if you get, if you get any, like, if you get Jordan Burroughs and then the Jordan Burroughs of jujitsu. So let's say like uh, the the freaking Australian guy, I can't remember his name for some reason. Anyways, if they, he's going to, Jordan Burroughs is going to beat him worse in wrestling than he's going to beat Jordan Burroughs in jujitsu. All day. Right? Yeah. Do you agree to that? hundred percent. This is one Craig, thing I Craig, uh, Craig Jones. That's what I'm talking about. Craig Jones. Mm. There's one thing I'll tell you, even guys who were the best wrestlers who are now in MMA, if they try and wrestle a six minute match or seven minute match with someone who's currently in college wrestling or currently at the Olympic level, they're probably losing seven or eight t- times out of 10. Look at Ben Askren versus Jordan Burroughs. Yeah. I mean, there's that, but there's so many more. Like, I can name you any example. Yeah, but also, like, not to knock on, on anybody, too, but, like, e- MMA wrestling and, and, and regular wrestling, is, they're different styles. It's like folk style and freestyle. That's you, could be, you could be average at regular wrestling and be disgusting at MMA wrestling, and you could be one of the best regular wrestlers ever and suck at MMA. Like, it's yeah. so different. It's a different style. Yeah. It's kind of crazy to me how we see, like, the – like the transition, because on one end of it, you look at Justin Gaethje coming over as a wrestler. Like he only uses his wrestling in MMA just for takedown defense. Like he doesn't even use it as like means to like get position or everything. He's just using it to say like, I'm eliminating like one facade of your entire fight strategy. And then you look at guys like Colby or Henry Cejudo that literally are just going to dog you, like just get in your face and like nonstop, just do it. Because but, he's smart. He knows, he knows that he probably gets tapped out every time he goes in for a shot you know like that's something that's a huge thing about like i started with jujitsu so like i would argue i'm i'm probably almost as good or better at jujitsu than am i wrestling like it that's every wrestler's biggest problem their neck they have never cared about their neck in fact in wrestling you promote get your head high open your neck (laughs) you know like so in jujitsu guillotines all day 
I mean, too, with Gagey is he's never been a real offensive wrestler. Like, even in college, he was a very scrambly guy. Like, he's like, he was always where do you wrestle player. at in college? University of Northern Colorado. He was their first ever All American. Um, oh, wow. I mean, he wrestled Jordan Burroughs and didn't even let up a takedown on him in college his senior year. So, like, his, his defense is filthy. And I think he's so powerful, too. He's like, I, I, he could just eat it and keep throwing. And his box has gotten so good now, also. Like, there's no point for him to really use his wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I was trying to think of it earlier because, like, you can kind of make the comparisons. Like, DC is obviously, like, the best Greco uh, wrestler that came through the MMA. Like, you look at Cejudo is probably the best freestyle. But to me, I couldn't really put a name to a folk-style wrestler. Like, you kind of, like – Freestyle like, wrestler. In, or freestyles. Wait. Oh, no, no. Greco. John Jones wasn't that good, though. But DC wasn't – I mean, he wrestled – He was an Olympian. He was a freaking Olympian, Julian. Yes, he wrestled Greco, but he was also a freestyle guy. He was fire. Yeah, but he was in a he was a I just, yeah. yeah. I just meant like his fighting style was also definitely enough. more like especially for DC. I felt Folk like his gotta be style was way more. What? Folk style has gotta be Ben Askren. He was probably the best. I'm searching this up about DC. I don't even think he what? DC was a Greco Olympian. Yeah. It's also just more apparent in the way DC fights. Like he was like every opponent dc fought before jones he just smothered opponents like he would literally just use his body weight like he was like pretty much like khabib before khabib kind of just in the sense of like with pressure but obviously he's nowhere on the same league as what khabib did but Dude, then he I got into John. He's extremely underrated and i'm not I even a fan i i, I honestly okay. never really okay Okay, stop arguing with me about wrestling because I know wrestling more than you. Cormier went to have a successful career in freestyle wrestling. He was a su- U- senior U.S. national champion every year from 2003 to 2008. Stop. USA. Like, yes, I know Cormier was good at Greco because I, I know D.C. personally, but he's a freestyle guy. Yeah. He won a bronze medal in the world championship in Greco-Roman wrestling. He – Okay. So, yeah, all right, he, he was primarily – told you he was both. But even though he was primarily freestyle, you could still say he was the best credentialed Greco guy that we've seen at that level. Therefore, I feel like he's right, Greco. And everybody should be happy and enjoy our, each other's presence and conversation. No, I think, we <laughs> I, think we, I think we all need to wrestle each other at a given set date and location, and then we'll just settle it that way. But what I was going to say is, is like, when I watch DC, I'm not going to be like, oh, like, DC is going to shoot a double leg here. I'm like, no, DC's fat ass is going to go walk him up against the cage and then just, like, throw him over his shoulder. Like, that's how DC wrestled. Yeah, I he feel like him being fat kind of benefited him more than him being ripped. I, no, I mean, body, the oh, punches, way, throws, way body more. that shit and throw it back. He wrestled folk style. He was kind of slick, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, DC was, like, he, he definitely, the, what made him fire was that he was a big guy who was slick. Hmm. Like, you yeah. know, he was always pretty – like, he had Oklahoma State wrestling. Yeah. You know? I, I kind of wish I would have seen him, though, before, like, USADA came. Because, like, if you would have, like, allowed DC to just be, like, peak animal, like, that would have been the scariest man on the planet. Like, that, yeah, like I kind of like – I kind of like that, though. I kind of like Yoel Romero is an Olympic silver medalist. Yeah. Yoel Romero also looks like – That's a crack. genetic – that's a genetic freak, bro. That's a once-in-a-lifetime – Always been like that, man, since – since he took second at the Olympics. I've watched that match a hundred times. No, I know. I'm not, and I'm not discrediting you, but you can't, like, Yo Romero's a once-in-a-lifetime athlete. You can't no, compare that's him to That's what I'm saying. He's always been like that. Yeah. But um, I think DC uh, being fat is cool because, like, yeah, if you look like Yo Romero, people are going to know you could beat somebody's ass. But, like, if you look like DC, it doesn't – no one's yeah. like, oh, this guy looks so scary, and, like, he could literally murder you. I, yeah, yeah. Like, that's how it goes for – I'd say a lot of people in the wrestling community too. Cause like, yeah, we're not going to beat most MMA guys, but like we'll beat 99% of people on this planet. Yeah. You know? 100%. Like, and like, you look at Yanni and you're like, come on, <laughs> you know, he's a short kid, long arms, but he'll come out and destroy anybody. I just think it's crazy. Like how much more dominant wrestling is than everything else. If you just do one martial art, it's insane. Yeah, it is. I mean, guys that have amazing wrestling with like literally no experience in anything else and still win fights. That was yeah. jiu-jitsu for a while. Yeah, but now it's not. Now it's wrestling. Bro. Now yeah. it's wrestling. Because, dude, they found out with jiu-jitsu, you just have to, like, wait out that, like, five-minute period. Like, you can oh, hold well, on. If you're, if you're, like, if you're 
absolute elite jiu-jitsu, it's just as good. Like if you're a yeah, world-class yeah, grappler, it's just yeah. as good. Like all of yeah. the pull guard and submit you in 30 seconds, it's just as good. Yeah. But like yeah, on I average, wrestling is so much more dominant. Yeah. Because like in this, because like you look at it in a, like a street fight scenario too, like your best bet isn't going to be jujitsu because like even if like yeah you hold on to one guy, if another guy comes up, you're dead. Dude, like so wrestling, I completely disagree with you. I disagree with that. I think jujitsu is the most dominant street fighting martial art over wrestling. Not if you're getting jumped, you're dead. If you're getting yeah, jumped. no shit, bro. If you're getting jumped, I don't care what you know. Okay, okay, no, okay, no, 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 no. Okay, two v one scenario, two v okay, one scenario. Why is it two v one? Why can't it be one v one? No, no, because no, 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 any of them, stop, any of them. Stop, 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 stop. I'm gonna have one point, and it's gonna end all your arguments. Ready? Uh, a punch to the face and a kick to the face hurt. Sure. Getting tapped out or getting put to sleep, you're done. Sure. Getting dropped on your head on concrete, you're dead. Done. Yeah, dude. But <laughs> if I put you on your dome. Dude, I'm not saying, yeah. saying jujitsu is like way more superior than wrestling, but I think with the thing that jujitsu does is it makes size way less of a factor. That is you true. Have, you can have a little dude that can be nasty at grappling. That Just is full guard, true. absorb a beating from someone until they gas out and then submit them. Versus That's if he's purely wrestling, like he has no jujitsu background, he's not going to ever take that guy down. He's just too small. That's that's the, that's the perspective I'm looking at it from. Okay. But if See, I was like a straight up boxer to fight a straight up wrestler, that if they're the equal level in their sport, the wrestler's gonna murder him every single time, every yeah. single time. Unless he get, unless he has a glass jaw. Yeah, but even then, just run out of like this, like <laughs> it's a windmill where you're running with your throwing punches. <laughs> that's a, that's another thing though, because uh, we were talking about like a lot of guys just being like not intimidating. Like I feel like wrestlers are the only ones that like you see in public, and the cauliflower ear is like the most identifiable identifiable thing that you could ever notice whether or not someone's going to kick your ass. Like, if I see someone with cauliflower ear, in, immediate, I have no problems. Like, There's a the thing. They could be a boxer, and they could also do jiu-jitsu. And at, your worst bet is they do MMA. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like, I'm getting a little bit. I, bro, I'm getting cauliflower ear inside of my head. So, you know how your ear, like, goes kind of inside of your head? Yeah, I have a good. bump that's not even on my ear. It's, like, my temple. Yeah, so as our viewers can see, I'm the only ear model um, on the cast. So, uh, uh, my ears. I, I, dude, the thing is, is I, I feel like to an extent it's genetics because I've been training since I was four years old. I barely have it, and I know kids okay. have like a year, and they okay. But how often have you drained? How often have you drained? never? I drained one time in my life. One time, Grayson Moore had your Grayson Moore had his whole life. So Bro, so until I was like in like freshman year of high school, eighth grade, and then I stopped. That's still that's You're years. Liar, bro. I train I, all the time. I, I, I train. train you are a sophomore. I train realistically. I train wrist realistically every single day, and I still don't get more at all. Okay. And this came. This didn't come from like years and years of wear and tear. This came from one club from Coach Jake Campbell at Tampa Prep. One time, he popped me in the ear and it blew my ear up. It wasn't like wear and tear. It was one event. I've met less than ten people who have gone to college wrestling or MMA. And have zero. You I don't have, have zero. zero. I have some. So give me That's some credit. Saying. Give me my credit where my credit's due. That's my point. My yeah. point exactly. You but then I know kids that train for like a week and their ears blow up. Like I feel like it has to be like there's got to be something to it. Oh, you just get the, the lucky draw of getting hit a little hard. No, bro. My ears still. All right. I'm doing everything you're doing. And my ears just aren't blowing up. I think you need to get hit harder. Yeah. I can't, I, can't, I, can't wait, I can't wait for the day that you get you catch a mean hook and boom. Bro. Why do you guys think I just don't like I just don't get beat up at practice? Like, we, we, it's not that I'm not <laughs> saying it has beaten me up at practice my when I was three years that. in high school. It's not that I'm saying that. Bro, Jacob Cardenas is on my team and he doesn't have cauliflower either. That's what I'm, I'm saying. saying that. There's gotta be like a subgenetic. But he wears headgear every day. I don't wear it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not an MMA, <laughs> not an MMA, maybe, but like. Oh, oh god! The most okay, you get it most in wrestling. Boxers yeah, and jiu don't yeah. get it as much. That's my point. You're I'm gonna still wrestling all the time, Julian. Okay, let me know when you wrestle somebody who's gonna <laughs> boom you right to the freaking ear. Multiple people. Well, I wrestled Ethan Basil without headgear my entire sophomore year of high school. My entire sophomore year of high school. Yeah, yeah, but he had like a he had like a padded afro. Yeah, but his hands were and elbows weren't padded. 
Those were not padded at all. I don't want to hear any of that. He does hand fight. Uh, yeah. If I recall correctly, you wore a headgear at least half. No, I did not. I did not. So you you do not recall correctly. You recall incorrectly. I would love to just think, add you, Ethan to this. You think, you think, <laughs> you think that uh, you think that it should be mandatory to wear headgear in college? No, no. I hate headgear. High school though. Okay, I know you hate them, but I'm asking. What about high school? Yes, because they're not 18. Mm. I might have to disagree with you on that. No, because this is the thing. But it's oh, no, you go, this is the thing. This is the thing. Bro, we're in 2022. Imagine if my a mother like my mom started throwing a conniption because I wasn't wearing headgear and I needed to. Like I'm not saying my mom cares about that, but if my mom threw a conniption, the like it would hurt somebody. Okay, here's my <laughs> my thing about it is Julian. It's not like. It's not like uh, it's not like wearing shin it would be guards. A lawsuit. It would be a lawsuit. Know, but listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. It's not like wearing shin guards, which ninety nine percent protect the person you're kicking over your own leg. It's it's your own ears. Like if you wear if you don't wear headgear, it's not like it's gonna hurt the person you're wrestling. It's only gonna hurt yourself. So if you choose to like get cauliflower ear, why does it matter? Because my like your mother could say that it wasn't your choice. Bro, imagine the well, lawsuit. I feel like I feel like I feel like middle school. I get it. Okay, and no, you, high school. Um, it should be whatever. You want. I'll give you another example. It looks clean though. If it matters every single, it looks clean. Dude, so it I went, add some swagger to it. I went to a medical table like a few weeks ago because I got a huge split in my head, and the guy was like, "All right, you have to go to the urgent care. This is where you have to go." La yada yada. Um, I'm pulling you out of the tournament, and I go, "No, you're not. Like, I'm still competing." He goes, "How old are you?" I'm like 21. He goes, all right, I don't have jurisdiction, but like, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter if it's my choice. I'm not yeah, like my compared, mom bad. compared my mom gashing bad. your skull open to a kid getting cauliflower ear. <laughs> that is not equivalent at all. This is this is why I'll say it. My mom would have had to say that I could wrestle. I he understand, literally no, said, I understand that, but I'm saying it's cauliflower ears not it's it's not gonna make the kid dumb or like, okay, or like okay, or kill okay. them. It's all right, just keep all right. the ears fat. I'll give I'll give another example. How okay, about but a, what's the lawsuit there? If I tore my meniscus, there? if I tore my meniscus, that's not the same thing as cauliflower ear, Julian. Why not? <laughs> oh my gosh! Surgery, surgery fix it. Surgery fixes it. Oh! If you tear your oh meniscus. God. You can no longer compete. You can't walk. Your legs done. That's, if you get yes, cauliflower I, ear, all that right. happens is your ears get fat and hard. That's it. Yanni, Yanni won a national title with a torn ACL. Wait, 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 wait. Who is the guy? Wait, everything wait, I'm saying who, is going right. Wait, 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 wait. Speaking of that, who was the wrestler? Was it last year or two years ago that wrestled with both torn ACLs from Iowa? I think it was this year. Spencer Lee. It was COVID year. Yeah. So it was 2021. How insane is that? Oh, like that's, both that's and both ACLs. Like what in your mind is like, yeah, I can still do this. Like I, I literally cannot move a step to my right or left, but I'm going to do this. Okay. Forward and backward wrestling. He is really, really good. And oh, I the know only this other guys that I know were really this good at that weight class were not wrestling. Soriano wasn't wrestling. Glory wasn't wrestling. And Vito wasn't wrestling. So now it's still an amazing accomplishment. Not downing that at all. Now, would he have done it on a normal year? Who knows? Dude, because no, because even if he's healthy, everyone, everyone, even even fully healthy, everyone wants to know how those Julian do it. I'm not saying the kid would have beaten Vito or anything, but dude, he won an NCAA title with no ACLs. Oh, I'm not. It doesn't matter who's in your bracket. Winning an NCAA Division One title is arguably the hardest task in college college athletics, and he did it without ACLs. You cannot take no, you cannot describe it. I'm not even no, a I, fan. Well, I did an all American, so don't tell me how hard it is to wrestle the NCAA tournament. Yeah, exactly. So I'm trying, I couldn't even make a division one lineup. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying there's levels to this. <laughs> but he has no ACLs. But there's levels to this. If Kyle Dake had no ACLs, he's still teching me. But it, no. Right. Yes, yes, I promise you. I promise you. Okay. 
You're making like, you're making comparisons that don't make sense. How Spencer Lee, but Kyle Dick to you okay, is, okay, okay, is okay, so okay, much okay. larger. Not, no not Kyle Dick. Not than Kyle Spencer Dick. Lee is to someone. In I'll give I'll give you an example. Yanni, without an ACL, one without two. Right now, might win still. I think I think I think Dwayne's lost in five. <laughs> We're not saying that's not what he's saying. He's not saying that it's not, that he couldn't win. He's saying how insane that is, and it is it insane. It is insane. I'm telling you, but everybody. No. I'll say this: Julian did change my mind. Now I will never ever bring that up again, just because he didn't fight the best. If you can't, if you don't beat the best, Bro, you can't winning an the NCAA best. title is still an NCAA title. Well, it's still insane. It's still yes. so hard. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. And he yeah. did it without his knees. Grayson, Grayson, Grayson. I'm take Spencer Lee out of the situation right now. Everybody who all Americans 2021, congratulations, you did a great job. But I guarantee you, every single one of them will tell you that tournament was nothing like 2022. I and I'm not discrediting you whatsoever, and I completely or 2020. Agree. But that there's a lot of teams that were discussing that weren't there, that were disgusting. Excuse. I think. And I agree, I but still, totally with the agree. task of winning, regardless of if it's high school, if it's no matter what level it is, having no ACLs is unreal. That is Insane. unreal. But it was a man amongst children. So he can't just he can't just admit that it's unreal. Okay. You okay. Have to add a okay. fact to discredit him after every time. <laughs> bro, bro, I bet you Spencer would tell you that like it's whatever. <laughs> I get like that's it's not that I, it's not that I'm discrediting him, man. It's that I know what he would say. <laughs> like, I, like, I like, you brought me onto this podcast because I know these people and I wrestle <laughs> them, not because you wrestle them. <laughs> like, yeah. my point. Like, that, I have my opinions. Uh, yeah, Grayson actually brought you on just so he could say you're wrong about everything you know about these people. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, yeah, you think you know him? Yeah, you're wrong. You're wrong. I know. I'm but still insane. I do agree with and look, I'm not I, saying what you ain't saying is wrong. But without Ivy League and without like a lot of those teams, a lot of those guys only those guys at All American that year solely for the purpose because those teams weren't there. And you saw it the next year. Yes. But I'm yeah. what I'm saying is it's regardless of that, winning an NCAA title with no ACL is still a hundred percent. That's what I'm saying. I started off with that, which is why I'm like, bro. <laughs> okay, oh God. But, but I think. I think COVID, like how we're kind of talking about how like the COVID year impacted like wrestling going forward. I think COVID like tarnished so many sports, like championships for that year alone. Like everyone like will bring it up and try to discredit it in some form or another, another saying like, saying like, oh, some teams didn't compete or like, oh, people weren't bought into this whole idea because we were like literally trying to live a life outside during like a pandemic like it, it, it's not easy to do but at the same time we we still knock on it that was such a good, was. Such a good point because a whole other thing is that building was half as crowded not yeah. even yeah. bro yeah. i'm telling you when i walked out into that arena that was the most nervous i've ever been in my entire life and the seats were empty <laughs> when they were full i my heart dropped you um, know like you also um What's it called? I just completely forgot what I was about to say. Do you think some wrestlers, Julian, aren't built for that like stadium spot? Oh, like real quick, exactly. kids like crack. Go back. Yeah, go for it. That year, not like you said, that the COVID year tarnished a lot of sports. Bro, with wrestling, it was the week of NCAAs. This, those kids cut all that weight. They made the NCAA tournament, and they were there the night before NCAAs. Oh, they, no, no, they, no, 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 no. They were there seven – it was seven days before the NCAA Seven days, but they're there. Like, they're there. Like, most of those kids are there. No. Well, oh, no, they're, they're all qualified. Everybody yeah, qualified. and then and then they, they cut it. They cut it. They're like, no NCAAs. And then for for winter sports, they're like, you don't get another year of eligibility. You're so, Pat Lugo, number one kid in the country, you don't ever win NCAA title. Sorry. Like – Seems like that can't, that can't happen. That it's can't so happen. Messed up. It's because they competed more than 75% of their season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why did they compete for 75% in the first place? To play for a fucking championship. Yeah, to you don't, win the championship. You don't, yeah. you don't fucking you don't play a yeah. season just to be like, oh yeah, I got to play in 75% of my game. No, There's you play to say you're a fucking champion. 
Like the that's why you do it. Seventy five percent of it. Yeah, you, don't even, you care about the other twenty five percent way more. That's the only part you care about. You only yeah. do the other part so you're able to do the twenty five percent. Yes. Yeah. And d- see, like that's what it, that's what I don't understand is like the NCAA like union board like with all athletes like literally had to unionize to go against the board of NCAA because there is such a big gap between the understandings of like what each other want from one another like literally at football now they they had to literally come up with NILs just because they couldn't keep athletes happy anymore like they were doing athletes so wrong and literally not benefiting them in any way that the athletes had to stand up themselves and create something so that they can benefit themselves i think now you look help that but that was something that's been trying to happen for decades now though oh yeah yeah but i think yeah. with the rise of media and the rise of like the society we live in today the, the nicest way i could say it is that's why it started getting like more popularized and like it started yeah. people started caring more for sure yeah but i mean dude you want to talk about like the ncaa you want to talk about like the sport that gets hurt the most is wrestling ever since title nine got dropped it's like no one cares about wrestling Look at all the programs recently, Old Dominion, Eastern Michigan, or Oregon, Boise State, like all these programs getting dropped. Like, literally last year with the whole Stanford debacle, the Kennedy yeah. wrestle, literally with with a with a blank single. Like, that is embarrassing. That is embarrassing. You have a championship rostered player and you cut your program. Like, what are you doing? Dude, and 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 listen, we're all team Julian here because he's he he owns Change Griffin Soul. But True at all. Um, I know it's a joke. But anyways, <laughs> but that post after was so cold. So cold. It's just him winning the NCAA in an all black single like this. And then it's like in quotes, no yeah. prospects of future success. Stanford Athletics. No, no. I like I texted Shane when he won his national title. I second guess. So cold. He's a so beast. cold. He's a so big cold, bro. Sure. And then they got, and then oh yeah, that that whole scenario was it was sad too though. Yeah. Especially at a school like Stanford, you have the money, like what? Yeah. What what blows my mind? They were, they is, were cutting a lot of programs though. They're cutting a lot of programs that year. Yeah. yeah. Like it was, that's the thing. That's something. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. Stanford's similar to the Ivy Leagues in that situation in the sense that like they don't really care about sports, bro. They don't make money from sports. In in relative terms. The m- amount of money they make from sports is pocket change. <laughs> it's to keep the sports alive. Yeah, like yeah, they have to use other money to try and keep the sports alive. Realistically, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, the, the Eastern Michigan one is the craziest. Have you heard about that one? Going going into detail they're, about they're, that. I don't think they're tra- so like these these numbers are loosely based, but uh, this is like like kind of the, how it was. They cut their program because they said they were losing like a million dollars a year for the wrestling program. And everyone's like, what are you spending a million dollars on for a wrestling program? And then they like dropped their like their like receipts, like 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 all their finance sheets. They released everything to the public. And it was like they were wasting like two hundred thousand dollars on a home duel. And people are like, What are you spent? All you need for a home duel is a ref and a mat. That's it. Like what yeah. you, what else are you spending on? And that's just the base. Like yeah. that's not even if you want to go crazy with like hiring concessions, like outsourcing, like like event staff to like publicize the event media whatever but like they weren't even doing that you look oh. at nca the only way i found out as a fan about wrestling was through flow grappling and flow wrestling in the ncaa page dedicates literally oh, like less than, one, one, less than one less than one yeah. like they have to out they have to outsource their media to other platforms just so people can get the recognition yeah. like wrestling like wrestling should be so much more popular within the states especially with the growth of ufc like predominantly ufc now we see all the wrestlers going into ufc growth there like it's an easy feeder but yet there's no publicity on it we don't we literally outside of high school wrestling in florida we don't have college like you're never going to do college in florida you're going to go up north you're like you have to look elsewhere like it's just not countrywide we're very selective in where we like follow wrestling crazy how like there's no coverage of wrestling and like even like with the olympians and, and and stuff like that and like you said, with the NCAA, there's no ESPN coverage at all. And, and for anyone that thinks wrestling is boring or, like, doesn't understand wrestling, if you watch the NCAA tournament, like, it'll literally completely change your mindset on the sport of wrestling. I know people who have never watched wrestling before, and they watch the NCAA tournament, and they're like, that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> there's just no intensity like wrestling. There's no other intensity to it. I think, I think the one video that sold it for me, I know I have it saved, but you guys will probably remember this. There was a video that Flo posted at, Oklahoma State and there was an upset and the guy got a huge pin 
Such and the crowd was going league. nuts. Yeah. It was going nuts. And he fucking threw up the OSU and literally everything was so perfect. Like every single fan in that seat was at, on the same wavelength. Like you don't really get that in other environments. Like everyone's kind of like cheering, but like they're cheering on your own. When you're in like a wrestling environment, it's like everyone is on the same page with what they're seeing and how they're like feeling about it. Like it's insane. Like people are like invested well beyond I see in other sports. And mm -hmm. like, usually like when you watch a wrestling match app, like you go to other sporting events, like there's downtime where like, oh yeah, you'll go to concessions like during the game or like you'll look at your phone or whatever. Once a wrestling match starts, like you can hear a pin drop. Like the only thing that's going on is what's going on between those two wrestlers. Like that's all that matters to everyone in there. And I think it's such like it, it's such a failure in my eyes that we can't like let people that don't know about the sport see its greatness because it's so easy to see it once you're there. But it's just getting people to see it in the first place. We're not doing that as much as we need to. Yeah, and I think. What do you think if if like in your opinion, what do you think is the reason why wrestling isn't as covered and like as popular to the public in America as like it should be? And what would you do to change it and start making it grow more and put it in that direction? Well, I mean, part of that's starting with what he said. I mean, in the state of Florida, who wants to wrestle when you have the best weather in the country? You can play football. You can play basketballs indoors, but I mean, you could play out outdoors, you know, like it's just like baseball. Like there's so many sports that people are good at in Florida, like in other states, like they're not as good at other sports, you know, like in Florida, yeah. there's not, you can't tell me a sport that they're, we're not good at. Like, you can't. Yeah. I like, not, like where we don't at least have somewhat of a standpoint. So it's just like who in Florida wants to wrestle? Well, nobody in college because they have to go somewhere else. Yeah. So I feel like also it's like you have people like Grayson Fisher, who he was a really good high school wrestler, but he didn't go to national tournaments as much. So his, like, because Florida is so distant from every other state that has college wrestling, yeah. not getting the, the attention he deserves. I mean, in the state of Jersey, like, for example, regional training centers tells you how many colleges are nearby you. In the state of Jersey, being at Blair, I could have gone to like seven or eight different regional training centers. That means within 250 miles, there's seven or eight colleges. Six of those are top 20 in the country. Yeah. You don't think it's also to do with like like the re amount of resources surrounding you? Like in Florida, there's I can go play baseball, I can go play football, I can go to an amusement park, I can go to the beach, I can go to this. And like Minnesota in the winter, it's like you wrestle or you do nothing. You know, like or, you play, or you play ice or you play ice hockey. Yeah, you know, and I feel like that's <laughs> yeah, another like, reason. Yes, for sure. That's my point. Yeah. That's my point. Like, now, what do you think? What do you think you, we could do as a collective community of wrestling to help grow the sport of wrestling so that it becomes more modernized and more popular with the public college wrestling in states that don't have college wrestling yeah simple as that california is like california is the best state at wrestling with the fewest amount of colleges nearby yeah, yeah. But that's because they have one division mm -hmm. so that had they progressed their wrestling so much faster because people like you have to win a sixty-four man bracket. One so ass. Like, and that's what like oh, every other like like their regional tournaments sixty-four man. Their district tournaments like six. Bro, like you're so ass. You're going through a crazy stacked tournament. So like that's what made California California, and they had wrestling. They've always had wrestling. They've never not had wrestling. You know, mm -hmm. Florida. We haven't had college wrestling since nineteen eighty-two. Yeah, exactly. The whole state of California, like the one of the biggest states in the entire country, is one classification in wrestling. There's only one A. That's it. There's no one, two A, three A, four. It's it's one. So if you win the state title, you are the best 152 pounder in the entire state. No argument. No argument. No but man. it makes it so, so, so hard to place in their tournament. So yeah. hard. Oh, yeah. Run. There's no running. There's no transferring schools. There's no. Everyone wrestles everyone. Mm -hmm. Jersey's the same way, and they're like the two. Yeah, but Jersey is split by private school and public school, right? No, not necessarily. I thought there's a private school states and a public school states. No, no. So that's New York. New York. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there's. I'm thinking of prep. I'm thinking of the prep schools. Yeah, yeah. not the prep. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to ask is, 
because I know for other sports in college, like for FAU specifically, we have like club teams, like we have club soccer, we have club lacrosse. Why, why don't you think more schools have club wrestling programs? Cause I know, cause I know from what I know, what would you say? I think a lot of schools have club wrestling. Yeah, too. FAU had one for a couple of years. FAU actually has a decent one. Um, Florida Gulf Coast has. UCF is really good, actually. Yeah, UCF is one of the best in the country. Yeah, UCF's really good. Um, yeah. So as far as club programs, there are a lot, but like, like that's not getting recruited. So like most yeah. of those guys who wrestle at club wrestling, they end up doing it because they're like, they're at the college and they're like, bro, I miss wrestling too much. Mm-hmm. And that's they like, like got hurt and never got to wrestle in college or like something like, like something that. like it's it's not that they're like excited to go wrestle club wrestling. But like when they when those club teams sign up for tournaments, like are you wrestling other club teams from other country or like are you gonna get yeah. like some actual teams can, from other you can wrestle a division one kid in an open tournament as a club wrestler? Yeah. So you go to Southern Skull and yeah. so you could so technically like we could start an FAU wrestling thing and go go into an open tournament. Yeah, 100%. theoretically speaking, and wrestle Cornell. Yes, one hundred percent. Not even theoretically, like like le- legitimately. Like yeah, you could do that. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start making bets with people, but rather than it be money based, I'm just gonna force them to sign up for open yeah, tournaments. My frog. Wait, Zach, we could literally sign up for like like the Michigan Open and go wrestle at it. Zach, my frog year, I wrestled a 36 year old man. It's an open tournament. Anybody can wrestle in it. We have to do one, bro. There's high schoolers like like uh. Uh, what's his name? The head coach at Navy. He won Midlands or like took third Midlands in high school. Colot. Yeah. A college Division One tournament. He took like third as a, as like a high schooler or he won it, I think. He won it, yeah. As a high schooler. So I think what I'm gonna start doing is, is anytime I do any fantasy sport, the immediate punishment is to make them that wrestle. Would be awesome in a in a. Make- open- in an open and we and we have and we have to go watch them get bitched. That is such a great idea. That is fire. That is because if I if fire. I got to watch, it has to be something. I know this year because I know this year we had a kid named uh, Nick Redhead who lost our league. If I got to watch Buff Nick Redhead with no ACLs take like on Kyle Snyder, <laughs> yeah, wrestle Kyle Snyder. I, I, I would have media content for the rest of my life. Oh I, my I, I would God. watch that video That's every day. Great idea, Zach. That's a, no, great that is idea. a phenomenal idea. That, I think that would go, honestly, I think that would make the sport of wrestling popular. Yeah, I agree. It would help, like, it, it would help like, its growth. Yeah. You know, that would go on bar stool so fast. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I think going back to what uh, Julian was saying too, I think another reason why wrestling isn't as popular is because of back to what I had stated earlier is the society we live in now. Kids aren't as tough and they don't like being beat up because you're you're getting beat up, you know. And it's like wrestling is a tough man sport. Like even the softest kids in wrestling are tough. They're they're disciplined. They work hard. Like and there's a lot of kids that don't want to do that. And you hear all the time of kids that try to make excuses about like wearing the singlets or like stuff like that. It's it. More kids don't want to do it because how hard it is. And that's just a yeah. fact. I, I think that's another crazy thing to notice is, like, you look at almost any sport, you're going to have your, like, prima donnas and your divas. But throughout any martial arts facility that I've showed up to, it is the most respectable environment you could ever be in. Oh, yeah. Like, most of, the, most of these people's backgrounds, including wrestlers, like, growing up, the kids that I knew that became wrestlers were the kids that were, like, bullied for being, like, smaller, or undersized, or, like, weren't good at other things. So they – had to go to a form of martial arts to like defend themselves. Like it always started out as some type of self-defense before it became like a passion. And that's why like they've grown up into understanding like the kind of like respect that comes from fighting. But then you look at other sports and it's like, Oh, I met like, Oh, I met this one famous athlete. He was the biggest dickhead ever. You see people that come out of like wrestling and mixed martial arts that people have met them in public. They always say nicest person I've ever met took time out of their day to sit down, meet with me, like talk with me, whatever, like, it's crazy that like we have people like that that are so like down earth human beings and we can't even like showcase them at all. Like we don't publicize any of the things they do. Not that they'd want to be publicized because that's just who they are. They're going to do it on, on a given anyway, but like other sports, you hear about something that a player did for their community or what they did for someone else. You're going to hear about it. And wrestling is just like, Oh, it's assumed. It's like, it's what they do. Now I agree with you because I'm a wrestler, but I'm also going to disagree with you because I'm a wrestler. And I feel like, I feel like that's because we don't have that fame. We're so humble because 
you could be the now nowadays you could be the best wrestler in the world and maybe your net worth is between 750,000 and like 2 million like you know like that's nowadays like 20 years ago yeah. you're making nickel and dime for being the best wrestler in the world like wrestling yeah. means nothing so that's what i think makes us so humble because like the only thing we care about is literally not that metal it's just knowing that you did it yeah like, yeah me and grayson i have looked at my state sorry i've looked at my state no, championship medal from my eighth grade year i haven't looked at that thing since like probably sophomore year of high school yeah but to this day it's still the best feeling i've ever had winning that first state title like yeah there's nothing that compares. Yeah, I think it's I think it's like Julian said, there's uh since there's no like glory to it, the people that are doing it at the highest level, is, even with like MMA until you're at the top, 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 you're doing it because you love it. You're not doing it for money, you're not doing it for fame, you're doing it because you love it. And I think that's another reason why there's a lot less like cocky assholes in wrestling and fighting. And I think the other reason too, and like people are always asking, like after a big match, how, like guys just beat the shit out of each other or like a big fight, how come they're hugging and stuff? It's like because you understood how hard you worked and how much you sacrificed to get to where you were. And that guy respected you enough to do the exact same. Like th that's just an unspoken respect. Like you understand the grind he went through. Like, like I, I could go out, wrestle Julian, and not know him and go through a war. It's like, I'm have so much respect for him because I understood the weight he had to cut. I understood the practice he had to go through. Cause if we were able to keep head to head like that, that means he respected me and thought I was good too to train as hard as I trained to fight him or compete against him. Bro, one of the best matches at the NCAA tournament was Peyton Robb and Ja'Cory Teamer. And that match was a great match. It was, like, going crazy for seven minutes. But what made that match even better was at the end of that match, they both laid on their backs. Yeah. You've seen this, for sure, because it's super popular. Laid on their backs, looking at the ceiling, and then, like, the going on to watching it, they, like, shook each other's hands, kind of helped each other up. They were, like... They knew how hard they tried for that match. And it was a placement match. It was to go for third and fourth or go to fifth and sixth. Yeah. And, like, bro, I remember watching that match in the players' lounge with 50 other guys who just competed at the same tournament. And we all looked at each other and was like, that's great. That's awesome. Like, that's why you wrestle. Like, that's why you do it. Yeah. yeah. Like, we, like, we were like, yeah, that, that match was awesome. And that was a hell of a way to end it. You know, like, it was just – so I, I know in MMA, you kind of have like some instances where like, I know we saw it between Burns and Usman where like you have guys training at the same camp that end up fighting each other. Is there anything like that in wrestling per se, where like you may train with someone at a camp and you end up having to wrestle them? Like, how is that kind of like mental battle with them or how is your way relationship? More often, like way more often than MMA. It's like very regular to wrestle and compete against your teammates in wrestling. Yeah. So, I mean, like, Anytime that I go to a tournament that's not like Cornell, like I'm not wearing Cornell, then I'm rest. I could very well easily wrestle somebody on my team. Like if somebody registered, I mean we registered through five guys at my weight class, or three or five guys, three guys I think, at the last tournament I went to. Like we didn't wrestle, but like we could have, you know, like it's very easy. Very, very good. Yeah, and you need so, to do Zach, like with, with especially with camps and stuff. Like, I mean, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. The top guys in the country at wrestling, like, they're all going to world team trials. They yeah, all go to world team yeah. trials. They all go to the yeah. camp together right now in Colorado. Yeah. Uh, literally, the guy who took first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, they're all going to Colorado in like two weeks. Well, like yeah. the thing about MMA too is like, like there's so many different organizations. And also, like, there's there's a lot more tiers. Like, you could be fighting for a belt, or you could just be like a guy that's just like a contender. In wrestling, like, in order to go to the world team trials, you have to win and beat these guys. Like, you can't avoid it. Like, there's no like other division. There's nothing else. Like, it's this one route you have to take. That like, you have to take it. So, like, those yeah, guys yeah. are always competing against each other, like all the time. At, at world team trials, Olympic trials, you'll see teammates wrestle each other at every. You'll at least see it every single rack at least once. So, in high school, I know normally they'd work around this but like let's say you had two guys in the same weight division and you both made it all the way to the final would you have to go against your own like teammate in the finals yeah. if it were to work it wouldn't be at states like postseason you can only register one kid for the weight class 
Okay, okay. Wait, so regular yeah, season yeah. happened. Julian wrestled a, a teammate in the preseason this year, didn't you? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, okay. that, that, and like, and like open, that happens more at the, like the well, open tournament. I mean, we, what, the way we like do our wrestle off is we go to an open tournament. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. We didn't, I didn't wrestle anybody, no. Yeah. But like yeah. the highest placer or whoever wins between in the match, highest placer. Yeah, so, so how often are you like, doing open tournaments? So what, what Julian was saying real quick is like instead yeah. of them wrestling off head on head, if they have five kids at 65, their coach will set them up as an uh, as an unattached, like open. They'll wrestle like okay. Midlands or whoever, and then whoever places the highest in that bracket is considered their starter. So next time you guys do that, Julian, I need you to text me what open tournament that is so I can uh, get my ass beat. <laughs> just playing yourself uh, in the 65 pound bracket. Bring him yeah. to an open. Yeah. If you if you can get Yanni to just go to like one tournament one time, just be like, yo, just go do this one match. And then if I happen to draw the seating against him, I'll make sure it's you sold. You would draw the seating. He's the number one seed, and you're gonna be the last. <laughs> <laughs> if I have to, don't well, I'll, 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 I'll fake the resume. First match. <laughs> oh, then I'm so doing it. I'm so doing it. He goes, if somehow I'm the last and he's that first. No, when he said that, I was like, you're going to do this. <laughs> you would draw. You never know. You never know. <laughs> oh, maybe Yanni gets the second seed. <laughs> Zach gets the first seed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. If I win, though, I will. I will never let y'all tell me anything ever about wrestling ever again. If I like, even if like you beat Yanni, you'd go to school for free. Zach, I wrestle Yanni every day, and I don't think you could even. Go he, okay, all right. So, how many bones in his body would have to be broken for me to even stand like a one percent chance? Or all right, like what? Okay. What without, would have to happen for me? I'll tell you this much: like, without both ACLs, he'll definitely do it. <laughs> 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 probably probably a torn hip labrum and shoulder labrum and i think you might be able to keep it within six points mm. he like would be, if you if you duct tape one of his arms to his body he would still take you down and ride you out yeah like dude, I, I could like that'd be terrifying i could see him taking you down without no arms he's like tripping him like, tripping him oh. you yeah that's what i was thinking yeah yeah. Even if he even if he was hogtied, you think he would just like worm his way to me and I'd <laughs> honestly I think you got it there. I think you got I mean, it. Spencer Lee basically unless, did that one. Unless, yeah. unless he can get a hold of like like an extremity, like an arm or a leg and get really good hold of it, I think you're fine. Imagine yeah, he tied wrestling Zach just like inchworming to him. <laughs> no, I literally pictured him just like up here. <laughs> Oh, oh. but hey, God. yeah, thanks for coming on, my brother. Yes, sir. Uh, appreciate the time for you to take out, and uh, yeah, that's all. I, that's Thank all. You guys for having me. It was a good yeah. talk. I had fun. Yeah, uh, tell Yanni I'd uh, tell Yanni I'd beat his ass hog tied. That's about as good as I get. All right, we're so. tell him to watch this podcast. <laughs>